bus driver, Arthur Chaimov, arrived at a traffic circle near the big shopping center in Beersheba, Israel, on Tuesday. He noticed a group of people gathered, and he saw someone near a car with a knife. He got out of the bus, and as he approached the scene, armed, he saw that a man was lying wounded. Arthur did not know yet that four Israelis had been killed and two others wounded by the terrorist wielding a knife in a stabbing and car ramming attack this week. What happened next is remarkable. Arthur stood not far from the assailant and asked him to put down his knife. I won't shoot you, he said. But the man refused. Arthur did not want to shoot the man, but after he repeatedly refused and then lunged at him, knife in hand, Arthur knew he was in danger and that he had to shoot. In interviews following the attack, it's clear that this bus driver was incredibly pained to have taken a life, even knowing that it was the right thing to do in that moment in order to protect his life and the lives of those around him. He's a person, not an animal you need to kill, he said. He was also a person. We're human beings. We're not animals. I'm not used to such a situation to shoot a person, he said. Ellie, this bus driver, Arthur Chaimov, is a moral compass for us all and a hero. He could easily have dehumanized this murderer and no one would fault him, but he remained a decent, ethical person even in extraordinarily difficult circumstances. Arthur's words bring to mind the famous teaching from Pirkei Avot, Bemakom she'en anashim tishtadel lihiot ish. In a place where there are no people, in a place of cruelty and dehumanization, strive to be a person. The text reminds us to resist the pressures of our intolerant, polarized, and violent culture. It says, no matter what, don't lose your humanity. Be a person of kindness and compassion. Be a mensch. Even when those around you are shouting, taharog oto, kill him. In this week's Parsha, Shmini, the high priest Aaron faces the deepest tragedy of his life, the sudden death of his sons, Nadav and Avihu, who are incinerated before his eyes. When Moshe offers words of counsel, the text says, Vayidom Aharon, Aaron was silent. I think we can all understand that instinctive reaction when we behold a shocking loss of life, we're left without words. But sometimes, in the face of a tragedy like this, it's important to speak to articulate our values, to lift up and celebrate those glimmers of humanity and hope that shine forth even in a dark time. Ellie, you are a person of deep sensitivity and care for those around you. You're unafraid to feel empathy and do all you can to comfort others. I love studying the moths here together. You immediately made the connection between the ritual of purifying from death with the red heifer and the practice of sitting Shiva. You reflected beautifully on your own experience of visiting Shiva homes and why, though difficult, it is so important for us to ease the isolation of those who've come into contact with death from the loss of a loved one. We join with all of Israel in mourning those murdered in Beersheba, Menachem Yechezkel, age 67, Laura Yitzchak, age 43, Rabbi Moshe Kravitsky, age 48, and Doris Yabas, age 49. We pray that their families will never feel alone, that they'll, never, that they'll always know that the Jewish people stand with them in their pain. Hashem yikom damam v'zichonam livracha.